But social media is a dominant part of our life. Phones are a dominant part of our life. And in this series that we've been talking about, the Pastor Bill's been preaching about FOMO, fear of missing out, social media is a significant part of what can cause FOMO in our life. Pastor Bill talked about the three phases, the three stages, right? It starts typically with comparison and then into rejection, a sense of rejection, and then it can lead to depression. All can happen because we have a fear of missing out. And social media is a big tool that can cause an unhealthy comparison in our life. And whether we like it or not, it is a part of our life. It is a part of our society, and we have to learn how to use it, all right? And so this is to help us see a little bit of the comparison and how dominant it is in our life with what goes on in our life, okay? So we're going to address some of that today. So if you would, turn your attention to the screen behind me for a video. Let's do it. I mean, let's do it. <laughs> When is it dangerous? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are people that are like, I would say, for the most part, purpose driven. I don't want power. I don't want fame. Like, I want to impact somebody's lives. But what is that like translated into the family that doesn't speak to each other at night? Mm -hmm. So we have, like, since we were dating, Taylor would say, no phones at the table. Like, yeah. when we come home at night, and especially because I work from home and from my phone, it's like been very, I've had to set very clear boundaries because I could be working all day, but mm -hmm. how much am I really working? Am I just scrolling? Mm -hmm. And so I've created boundaries like I don't look and scroll social media until late at night. We don't have phones at the dinner table ever um, because we do need to be present. We want our kids, we don't want our kids to know mm -hmm. because y'all's kids probably do the same thing. I mean, literally yeah. our kids know to like my two -year -old text. Does. Oh, yes. <laughs> she can't eat a meal yeah. without having YouTube kids on. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, this is crazy. Like, this is a bad and habit I think we've the, created. Like, well, the the one thing that like I was worried about though is like it's great as a tool but you know one of the most the coolest things I think about being a Christian is is the community and what we can like why did God make it to where we have to learn from each other you know like part of me growing spiritually is getting my butt kicked by somebody else probably you know and when when did social media come in and eliminate that uncomfortableness mm -hmm. to now I don't have that anymore yeah. because I've created my own false community around. It, and how many exact, people are doing that's that? That's what's really scary. And not only how many people are doing that, but how many Christians are doing that? Yeah. I don't want to look somebody face to face mm -hmm. and them to challenge me anymore. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. so easy to hide behind it. Yeah. But yeah. that the, the false community thing is like, I mean, I've seen that in real, like in friends that they seriously think that they, again, are a professional at something. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, it's I thing. got face to face with that person who can sit there and talk for 30 minutes on Instagram stories and you're like what why are you still talking to no one you're talking to a screen and literally face to face can't say anything yeah. it was the yeah. most uncomfortable lunch and I was yes. like this is awful but I think that comes down to at least like I think about that as parenting like my my mom would make us go to social things like we I'm sorry Cassie you have to have friends you're going to this like so I think that that's a lot on mm -hmm. and as an adult you that's yeah. you having to set your own boundaries so if you're not disciplined but you're probably not disciplined in a lot of other areas of your life you can love people without loving God but you can't love God without loving people mm -hmm. and it's like social media it's like one of those things where it's like it's a great tool if you also have a great community of right. people and yeah. somebody but it doesn't work the other way. Like, mm -hmm. if you don't have that support system or people keeping you accountable... You well, can't. and you can tell whenever people, like, don't have a community. Like, with this whole influencer thing, there's, I mean, so many girls who are mm -hmm. these influencers now, but it's like, you go to their feed and it is only them. And it's also, it's yeah. lonely, but it's yeah. super narcissistic, too. And yeah. it's like, that's sad to me. It's like, you're not using that for, like, actual good. A lot of them, because I have... I know several of them and mm -hmm. I feel like they are introverts and it's their way. Yes. It's they're like naturally writers or whatever mm -hmm. and that's how they communicate. Mm -hmm. And so when you do get with them one on one, they can't really yeah. communicate. Yeah. And I think it's made it worse too because they're communicating like with the phone right. screen, especially with Instagram stories now. They can literally just chat with chat with us. Right. And we can, you know, talk back and forth, but it's like Face to face, if they don't know what they're gonna create a story about, it's like this conversation is just awful. It's a different skill set, for well, sure. It is. Like it's hard for me to blame an external source, right. because, for instance, we can look at people's social media and we can see all the cool trips that they're taking and vacations, yeah. and you could. And, and I personally have had conversations with people who get mad and are like, 
they're basically what they're really saying is like, why isn't my life that good? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I'm mad that yeah. my life, I can't do those things. Well, yeah, but then, I, but I watch those things, I'll see the trips and I'm like, man, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm so glad they're blessed. I'm going to go to that trip next. That's I want to go heart. there. But I, and I'm not exactly. Your heart. And so exactly. it's based on people, the pureness of your yeah, heart. I mean, exactly. And boundaries. If you know you can't look at something because it's going to make you angry and upset, then don't look That's at it. That's very smart. I mean, you just yeah. have to be aware of yeah. your own self. It goes back to discipline and self, like having boundaries for yourself because it's like, you're a grown adult. Get off then. Stop. Yeah. Make the decision to get off of it if it's not helping you. Or follow two accounts and make yourself private and right. follow your grandma and your mom and yeah. whatever. There is a science behind the dopamine hits you get from the likes and the comments mm -hmm. and the activity and the action. Right. And it causes a chemical mm -hmm. reaction in your body. Yeah. And so if you're getting like, 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 and you're yeah. just on that high, mm -hmm. yeah. and then you get, somebody says something negative. Or yeah. something real life happens. Yeah. Or something real life those. happens, yeah. or you go an hour without that activity, it starts to feel like depression because you're not getting that, yeah. that bump that you were yeah. getting from your activity. I, I'm guilty, catch myself between meetings mm -hmm. or just killing time, yeah. looking at nothing. And that's because it's stimulating something. Yeah. You know, I mean, there is a pleasure sensor somewhere that's going, okay, this is good. Or otherwise I wouldn't be doing it thoughtlessly, you know? Just like we know ourselves and we know our vulnerabilities. You have to know that for your child. Mm -hmm. And when they're in your household under a certain age, you're still their parent. You're and so protector. you have to be aware of every single thing that they're putting in front of themselves. Yeah. You have to keep them innocent, mm -hmm. but there's also a point where you have to train them. Mm -hmm. And so you have to show them what to be aware of mm -hmm. because they're gonna go out in the world. Yeah, this is, and if this they're is 18 years is. old and haven't been taught some things when they go to college and they're on their yeah. own, yeah. it's and a whole other world. <laughs> that's what's great about a community. It's like, no, we don't, we don't want a bunch of kids that are soft. Yeah. Real community cannot be replaced. Like, because the, uh, uh, the issue with a lot of people that deal with the depression or suicide or whatever, it's isolation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is, you are by yourself with your yeah. own thoughts, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to, you know, if you're in a community, you're probably, you know, you're gonna have to serve that community. You're mm -hmm. going to have to be involved and you can't get that, you know, online. Yeah. What I really like slaps me in the face is when I'm watching someone else's kid on social media and my kids are playing in front of me and I'm like, I'm literally watching a stranger's baby play when my babies are playing in front of me. I get a slap in the face when my eight-year-old makes fun of me. He's like, did you put that on social media, mom? Or what they say on social media, mom? So that's, that's my accountability partner. We live in a culture that we demand entertainment and, and all the time. Gratification and instant too. gratification. And instant gratification. It's like we, we, we're constantly, I mean, I think we're pleasure seeking beings mm -hmm. naturally right and gosh I've had conviction lately just about like how are you spending your time if I spend mm -hmm. an hour on these apps how much better could I be getting at something that matters yeah and the fact that there are two opposing forces there it's like I don't know why I'm doing this but I keep doing it all the time yeah. that says there's probably a problem yeah, yeah. Like if it's something that's really affecting you then you have to know i can't be around that right now right. it could be that you have you follow five people who are only encouraging and that's all you look at and you set i have 10 minutes a day to look at it or whatever it is mm -hmm. but i think that has to go back on the individual to like really be honest mm -hmm. yeah. and disciplined with themselves yeah. mm -hmm. i love social media and i think mm -hmm. it's great but i know that in my heart if i'm starting to get judgmental or if i'm starting to get angry with someone, mm -hmm. I cut it out. Yeah. You just have to and know your you. yeah. yeah. I'm not yeah, getting choice. angry with that. If I start to get angry at someone else, it's not their problem. Yeah, and they mm -hmm. don't know. It's They're my problem. I know. Yeah. We've got to be responsible for what we let in our eyes, right. in our ears, and ultimately into our heart. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's where there are gray areas on social media. Like mm -hmm. you said, it's not exactly what they call nudity. Right. So is it okay? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, but I think that's where we have to be responsible yeah, and you for have the what we let set in. already. Yeah. yeah. All of us here grew up like we, we know something different mm -hmm. right we know we can look at what's happening now and and kind of be the the old judgmental people yeah. and be like look what's happening to the youth <laughs> kids, right? these days. kids these days <laughs> we grew up in some version of that because mm -hmm. like our parents are saying the same things about you know our generation mm -hmm. right and the way they play video games and game boy and all that stuff right but we turned out okay yeah. right because the scripture says train up the child yeah. mm -hmm. Uh, not just teach, but train yeah. them up. So we're training 
our kids or, or that generation or whatever the youth for training them mm -hmm. how to handle what they are going through just like yeah. we were trained how to handle what we're going through it's not like they've got some crazy thing that's never been experienced right. it's just that's, that's generation's right. window yeah. that that window of humans is going through that right now just like we went through our own stuff and yeah. still are yeah. um, we're just going to train them up how to handle yeah. that thing the well, right they way. were born for such a time right. as this yes. like they were like god knew they were going to be yeah. born now yes. so they're going to know things that we can't know and don't know and and they're going to do better things with it than we can use it intentionally mm -hmm. and it can be phenomenal my, my company does marketing for churches. We use Facebook and Instagram advertising to grow churches. Mm -hmm. The results that it's getting is phenomenal. I mean, we get testimonials from these pastors. We get testimonies from people who have, uh, have come in and they're saying things like, I wouldn't be at this church, like I wouldn't have found mm -hmm. a church if you guys didn't advertise. If yeah. you guys mm -hmm. didn't do social media marketing, I would not be here. Mm -hmm. And we also have people who are like, literally my brother came because he saw an ad and now he's saved and now he's serving. Like, mm -hmm. because he went on Facebook and, and, and found one of our advertisements, really. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And so it's like, it, it is, it's a tool, right? We are reaching people we never would have reached if we didn't use that program. Mm -hmm. If you look at how this fits into scripture, you look at the Great Commission, you look at like what we're here to do is reach people. Mm -hmm. We've got access to more people than ever. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's awesome. We don't really want it to be like, hey, you don't have to come to church anymore because now you can just get it on your phone. Right? So it's like using that tool, but then also saying, but still come to a using local a house. house. Yeah. yeah, with an invite, with an mm -hmm. event you guys are doing or whatever to bring people into God's house. So using it to, to spread the good news, but not replacing actually going yeah. to a physical church. No matter what you have, no matter what, yeah. I mean, you still need that accountability. Yeah. Like you still, and that's what's community. great yeah. about real community. real community. I like social media. Ultimately, Same. I do too. I think Ultimately, it's great. I love it. Yeah. I dislike it. <laughs> he dislikes it. <laughs> That's all right, buddy. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. But I do think, you know, it's like you want to go where the people are. If that's where they're at, then that's where we'll go. And you work, you, it's not like you hate it because you make stuff that goes on social media yeah. and it influences people. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe just, I just hate what just, it does to he me. Just knows his yeah. You just have to know your boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. applaud that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that's all we've really that. talked about. Like, yeah. If I, if I could speak for everybody, I feel like summing it up is just, it's on you. Yeah, it's yeah. your discipline. Yeah. And, and if, if looking at vacations makes you mad and jealous, that's an internal yeah, thing. Yeah. Right. It that's should inspire you, you and yeah. say, wow, that's awesome that that person is blessed. I want to do that one day. Yeah. Right. right? Use that as an yeah. encouragement. So it, it goes back to, we've probably said it three times, but uh, it, it's like money. It's like anything. It can be used for good or bad, mm -hmm. just whoever's hands that it's in. Yeah. It's up mm -hmm. to that person. Yeah. Let's give a round of applause for these five here. How's everybody doing? Everybody good? Okay, I just want to—I want to clarify some stuff. My name is Taylor Shear. I am the son and uh, firstborn and uh, only name carrier of Bill and Sandy. Um, I am very much like my dad, who I, I love my dad, he is awesome, but I'm also a little bit different, so let's loosen up a little bit. Um, this isn't a judge holding court tonight, or today. I keep saying tonight, and I want to apologize, and PC is going to yell at me for it, but me and my wife have the uh, distinct privilege and honor of overseeing the local church, which meets on Tuesday night. So if I say night, I apologize, it's just the flow that I'm in, I'm not a professional. Um, <laughs> But no, my, my parents are out of town, um, so I have the, the honor of speaking today in the social media frenzy that we live in. I love this series that has uh, been titled FOMO, and it's the fear of missing out, because whether we realize it or not, that is a reality, that the fear of missing out, of not being a part of something or not being able to say that I was there or um, that I captured it and then posted it, is, it, it that's real for some reason. But um, I am more like Rob than uh, I think most people around my age. And the fact that I don't love social media, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, I hate to be that guy because I, I, I really don't understand it totally either which I know I'm supposed to as, as a young 30, 
year old, but uh, I don't get it. So for me, I just I use it as a thing to look. And I, th- I think what, what Gib said is so accurate when he said that he'll pull out his phone and just it's to waste time. And when it comes down to it, that's, I would ask, what's the purpose? What is the purpose of social media? And I think that Travis hit that uh, there at the end, that it is a tool. And what's the purpose? If it's something to pass time, there's other things that you could be doing to better pass your time. Or if it's time to unplug, then it's time to unplug. But the problem is that if someone has an account, then they have an opinion, and we're supposed to know what that means or, or that their opinion carries weight or whatever that is. So I think this is a, a vital series in 2019 in the United States of America. So uh, I want to address three things this morning. I got three quick points. Uh, number one is joy versus happiness. Joy versus happiness. Number two is going to be comparison. And then number three is know who you are. And these are all points that are, are directed towards or the reaction of social media in our lives. So uh, let's pray real quick, and then, uh, and then we'll get this going. Lord, we come to you now. We thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you that it is alive. Lord, I thank you that Right now, you're preparing our hearts to receive your word. Lord, I thank you that they're not my words, but they're yours. Lord, I thank you that they hit every person where they sit, how they need to hear it for their stage of life. Lord, I thank you that as I stand up here on this stage, Lord, I thank you that I decrease so that you can increase. And Lord, I thank you that you, we, there's breakthrough in people's lives, there's mindset changes in people's lives, and we leave here better than we were when we came. Lord, we love you, we worship you, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Uh, I'll tell you what, that uh, first off, caption very accurate for my man, Pastor Chano. Um, that, that is the one that needs to win. But then I thought that the graph was very, it should have been, hopefully it was a wake-up call for most people. When you open up uh, your screen time app and you look at it, I know we did it. Uh, my wife Cassidy is here. Um, my better half, and uh, mother of my children, my sidekick. Um, I'm going to a lot of other things. I actually call her by her name, unlike my father calls my mother different names. That's Cassie. Um, but <laughs> no, we were, we were laying in bed one night, and we opened it up and, and looked at what it is. And honestly, I think it was a gut punch for both of us. Like, what in the world? Like, we spend two days out of the week, like 40 hours out of the week on our phones. How is that real? Like, what, what are we using it on? And for me, my option actually wasn't up there. First off, I know Dub said that if you pick Bible, then you were saved. I would say if you pick Bible, you are a liar, <laughs> and we are in church. So, I'm, just, I'm not calling you that. I'm just saying that's what I would say. So, that, that's not it at all. But, um, Mine is Prime Video right now because I'm a binge watcher. Anybody, have we got any binge watchers in here? Come on. The, I'll tell you what. The only depression I've ever dealt with is when a series is over and I don't know what to do, what to do after that. So, uh, no, but it, it's, I, I understand this whole thing. So, I just want to uh, have, I just have a few points, like I said, and what the Word says in regards to these because I think social media can be a great tool. But I think it's difficult because people essentially use that as a blueprint for their life. They use social media and what you should look like and what you should do and how successful you should be and what is success and where is that at. And it, For me, it's the word says one thing and social media says the other. Which one is true? So it's, well, I don't look like this. I don't wear these clothes. I, I have only made it to here and this is the time frame that I'm in, and there's all of these unmet expectations that are put on us by social media that we allow in, but what does the Word say about us, and what does it say, and how to deal with certain things? So that's what we're going to um, address today. So point number one is joy versus happiness. Joy is closely related to gladness and happiness, but joy is more of a state of being than it is an emotion. 
Happiness is an emotion. Joy is a state of being. It's the result of a choice. It's a fruit of the Spirit, which we receive by grace when we become saved, that we then can walk in that joy, that joy and happiness are two very different things. Uh, First off, we're going to read out of Philippians 4, and 4 through 7. And I'll let you guys know also, for those of you that uh, are members here, I do not read out of the New King James. So all these will be New Living Translation. So Philippians 4, 4 through 7. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Okay, flip over to the left just a little bit to Acts 16. So that was a letter that Paul wrote to the Philippians. Now we're going to read Acts 16 and verses 22 through 25. A mob quickly formed Against Paul and Silas, and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten, and then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening." So I'll tell you what's awesome about this, that, the, that Philippians is more of a foundation to the part in Acts where they are wrongly imprisoned and how they react to it, how they react to this situation, how they react to circumstances in their life. Because happiness is in direct correlation to the circumstances that we are experiencing in life. That is the emotion of joy. Or or, that's the emotion of happiness. But joy is more of a state of being. It's who we are. It's a fruit of the Spirit. We don't have to do anything for that joy. We freely receive that joy. So the circumstances of our life do not determine whether we are joyful, but they do determine whether we are happy or not. So when he told the Philippians to rejoice in the Lord always, to be full of joy always, he wasn't just blowing hot air. He wasn't just throwing out what sounded good. No, he, is, he has proven previously how he reacts into situations. So he's not just blowing hot air, he's practicing what he preached. Paul also insists to rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. We all can think of the song. Anybody else in, in kids' church, Bible school? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Everybody else with me? Come on. Am I the only one in this point? I know uh, Caitlin did because she went to Grace with us. But uh, we, we, yeah, that's all I could think of when when I read that again, when I wrote it and read it. But Paul in this time doesn't say sometimes that be full of joy sometimes. Again, rejoice. No, he says always, not sometimes, because sometimes is if we might casually shrug our shoulders and just accept our circumstances. So what Paul says is always to rise above your current situation. It also says to pray, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. When we pray, we are allowing God to come in and change circumstances that are beyond our control. So happiness does not play a factor. Because when we pray, we're letting God take control of the situation, of the circumstances that are beyond our control. And then we can sit, and that's where you find that peace, that supernatural peace. Because we're allowing God to take control of circumstances that are, again, beyond our control. And he's coming in and, and changing the landscape of our life. But too many times we worry because we see things on, on, on social media, or we see 
news clippings and it's, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. It's, I'll tell you, for us, we, with planning the local church downtown, we have realized that it isn't just talk, like life, the world is a bummer. Like life for a lot of people is a bummer. It's literally just, get, just taking it in the teeth every day. But that's where we can come in and bring that hope. Because the world is broken. The world is hurting. We have the answer. That answer is Jesus. So for us to walk and be truly joyful, we catch the attention of people because that, that's not a reality for most people. So that's where we're able to step in and just like Paul says here, to rejoice always, to be full of joy always. Joy is not the same as happiness. Happiness is not going to be found permanently. Happiness depends on circumstances. Joy doesn't. To be truly joyful does not depend on circumstances. It might surprise many, but True joy is not found in the pursuit of happiness. But it's found in the pursuit of Jesus. If you seem to lack joy or lack the, the joy in your life, it's a lack of the misfortune of the flesh. We need to recognize who we are, whose we are, and what we were called to do. And then that changes your mindset. Just remember that when social media tells you you should look this way and you don't or you should be like this or this is how, I, I, I know for me growing up, it's just what you would assume is, is real. It was you go to high school, you go to college, you graduate college and immediately have a $100,000 a year job, which is laughable at this point because I'm older and I understand what that is, but that is what you assume. And then when, here's the, the issue that I have is it. Social media creates a standard or media creates a standard that we allow into our life. And then when we do not hit that, that's when the devil comes in and things start to creep up on us and then overtake us. That's why depression is such an issue. That's why it, un, these unmet expectations that are not from God or not from the word, but from whatever you see on your screen, how, how can we live life like that? You're pursuing something you're never going to achieve. Never. You're never going to achieve that. But what does the word say about you? But the problem is we start comparing ourselves, which is a seamless transition to point number two, <laughs> comparison. Let's read uh, point number two, comparison. 2 Corinthians 10, 12. Oh, don't worry. We wouldn't dare say that we are as wonderful as these other men who tell you how important they are. But they are only comparing themselves with each other, using themselves as a standard of measurement. How ignorant. How ignorant. Point number three. No, I'm joking. That's the only thing I had written down for point number two. That should be enough of a message for us when it comes to comparison. Here's the harsh reality. God has placed a call on your life that only you can perform. You have been equipped with every tool that you need to fulfill the call that God's put on your life. God isn't sitting back going, ha ha, I'm gonna put this call on him, but I'm not gonna give him the tools to fulfill that call. He is not doing that. But the problem is now with social media is we're comparing others' highlight reels to our behind the scenes. And then we see, man, look how great that is. Look, he has arrived, but yet we have no idea the hell that he went through to get to that point. And I'll tell you, to be honest, most of us don't want to go through that. But we're also not graced to go through what, what that person went through because that is not our call. That is not our lane. But yet we shift our focus from our lane to theirs, and in all reality, it's, you're going to be disappointed. What is the purpose? If the purpose is to set a standard on what you want to reach, don't. You're only going to fail. If you are running your race and fulfilling your call, that's all that matters. 
Yeah, you don't know what they say about me. I know, but I know what God says about you. You have every tool you need to fulfill the call that's been put on your life. Please don't try to fulfill someone else's call. You don't have the tools to fulfill that. And all you're going to be doing is, is running and not going anywhere. Comparison is, it opens the door to so many things. Just like uh, they said on this, the, talking about the trips and all that. Well, yeah, you're posting the best parts. Not the six-hour flight with the two-year-old and the one-year-old. We won't ignore that part. But you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we, we go through things. We don't want to know all the steps to get there, but then they're here, and man, that's what I want. No, fulfill the call that God placed on your life, and you will truly be fulfilled. That's what we're all looking for, fulfillment. We want to be fulfilled. How do you be fulfilled? Fill the call that's on your life. Not that's on my life. Not that's on somebody else's life. Fulfill the call that is on your life. So point number three, know who you are. I want to start this point out with uh, Rick Warren wrote Purpose Driven Life, and I took a little excerpt from that book. You are not an accident. Your birth was no mistake or mishap, and your life is no fluke of nature. Your parents may not have planned you, but God did. He was not at all surprised by your birth. In fact, he expected it. You are not an accident. You might have heard that your whole life. You are not an accident. You might have been a surprise, but not to God. He knew what he was doing. You are here for a purpose. You are here for a reason. You have been equipped. You are good enough. You are good enough. So don't think you have to reach this certain pinnacle of what the world is telling you you have to be like in order to fulfill your call. No, you are good enough. Ephesians, we're going to look at a few things here that uh, just says what God says about us. Ephesians 2.10 for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. You are God's masterpiece. You are not this number, or this uh, painting that they've all kept away, but then he's got the Mona Lisa up here. No, you are the Mona Lisa. You are the masterpiece. You don't have to change. If you were supposed to do something else, you would have been born a different way. But you're not. You are born who you are to fulfill your call. When you're having a bad day and it, and it just gets to that point where it's, it doesn't feel like you're worth much, remember, you are the masterpiece of God Almighty. He doesn't make mistakes. He didn't start with you. Genesis 1, 27 so God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. You are created in God's own image. You don't lack a thing. Not one thing. All I'm trying to do with these verses is remind you of your worth. Because we're, we find our identity in social media and how many followers we have and how many likes we have and how many comments we make. I mean, all, all this stuff, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. It, it's, we're looking for somebody. And here's the, here's the hard part. Someone is, is putting something on the internet and that's becoming the standard and yet nothing is looked at of where it came from. It could just, someone just thought it up, put it on there, boom, it's reality. But that's not the case. This is what God says about you. You are a masterpiece. You are made in his own image. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. He knows the plans he has for you. That does not mean that generationally things have been passed down and that's what I'm going to be. No, he has plans for you. 
I know that your granddad might have been an alcoholic. Your dad might have been an alcoholic. That does not mean that you have to be an alcoholic because he has plans for you. He created you as an individual. What if that family tie that your family has been carried, carrying around for generation to generation to generation to generation, what if it stops with you? What if your kids don't have to deal with the depression anymore? What if your kids don't have to deal with alcoholism or drugs anymore? Well, my, my grandparents had a bad marriage. My parents had a bad marriage. Well, you know what? You can have a good marriage. It is possible. But you have to know who you are. You have to know what God thinks about you. Who cares what anybody else thinks about you? Think about what God thinks about you. Luke, 20, or Luke 12, 6. What is the price of five sparrows? Two copper coins? Yet God does not forget a single one of them. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. He knows the numbers of hairs on your head. Well, God doesn't care about the situation. Really? He knows the number of hairs on your head. He obviously cares about the situation that you're in. You are his child. I care about the situation my kids are in. I care. How much more does God care about the situations that we are in? If he knows the number of hairs on our head. There are 7.53 billion people on the wor in the world. 7.53 billion. And he knows the number of hairs on every single head. He cares about you. He cares about the situation that you're in. Please don't sit back and think, you know what, I don't, oh, this situation, man, I, I, no one cares about it. No, God does. No one loves me. God loves you. I promise you that. He wouldn't have sent his son to die for you if he didn't care about you. There's no way. But we have to understand that and truly accept that. It's the point that we sing the song, you know, it's well with your soul. Be well with your soul is you being okay with you. How many people have ever been on a vacation, come back, and they're more tired than they were when they left? Come on, anybody with me? Not just because uh, you married Cassidy Shear, who wants to see everything in a massive city in one day. That's not called a vacation, that's called work, and that's what we do. But no, we go on vacation, we'll go to the beach. You go to the beach, come back, you're more tired. You know why? You can escape Tulsa, you can escape your job, your neighborhood, your friends, but you cannot escape you. You lay in your bed and you cannot shut your mind off thinking about all the things that, that you've done wrong or that have been wrong or that are negative. But if you can't get away from you, if you can't be okay with you, you'll never find that. So again, let me tell you what God says about you. You are his masterpiece, made in his image. He has had plans for you before you were born. And he knows the number of hairs on your head. He deeply cares. You are worth it. I don't care what anybody else has said. You are worth it. So don't think that you can't do something because you're not good enough or I don't know how to do that. In, his we in our weakness has made his perfect strength. So let your weakness show. He said, I boast in my weakness because it's, it's, not, it's not me. It has nothing to do with you. When you get into your weakness, it's his perfect strength. I'm going to end with this. Jeremiah 1.5, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. You know everything that you've done. People know what you've done in your past. Please don't let that define you. So I, I admitted, because I feel like I can be vulnerable, um, I'm a binge watcher. And uh, ha uh, happy St. Patty's Day. I did the 23 and Me. A lot of, a lot of percent Irish. 
no percent uh, Native American, like my dad wants to claim. Um, <laughs> like none, like zero percent. Not like point zero zero. like ze- The number could not be any bigger. And he's like, oh, they don't know. I'm like, genetics? <laughs> Science, genetics. But folklore passed down through your family and knowing the family before him, little suspect to start, are going to go against scientific genetics? No, totally makes sense. But I, I looked at that again today, the genetics thing. So I, I could possibly have some Viking in me, which makes me really happy, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, what a great time. But uh, I was watching a show, and it was during that time, and the king was taking his sons. They were, they were coming into manhood from being a child to being a man. They were going on their first raid. And they are getting ready to set sail. They pull off the dock and they start going. And as soon as they pull off the dock, the king looks straight forward the whole time. And his two sons are, are, keep looking back and they're waving everybody as they're leaving. And they're looking, thinking about whatever you're thinking about as a 12 or 13 year old boy in that time. And they're looking back and he looks over and he says, quit looking back. That's not where we're headed. Quit looking back. That's not where we're headed. So I'm laying in bed at like 2.30 in the morning. Cass is asleep. I'm like, that'll preach. That's good right there. I'm going to fit that into a message somewhere. But no, it's, it's so true. Quit looking back. That's not where you're headed. Don't let your past define you. I understand you know what you did. Here is the awesome, freeing, it's the best thought in the world is God knows what you've done and still loves you. Let that sink in for a minute. God knows everything that you've done, every thought, every action, and still loves you. Still has a plan for you. Still knows the number of hairs on your head. Well, you don't know what I did last night. I know, but God does, and he still loves you. Well, you don't know what I've been through. I know, I don't, but God does, and he still loves you. Don't let other people's expectations define you. God knows you and still loves you.